Hi, I'm James and this is Newspeaks. How does the media disregard certain people and the views that they hold? I'd like to examine current Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn as an example. Jeremy Corbyn, 251. Labour is now a serious risk. Labour under Jeremy Corbyn will hurt working people. He seems like the kind of teacher everybody takes the mick out of when you first start school. There is a sort of element of gentle media bullying going on of a chap. Nothing you know, gentle about it. Nothing gentle about it. <laughs> now, firstly, I feel I must put my cards on the table and say that I'm an active supporter of Corbyn and the values he's a proponent of. More importantly still, I support the platform of direct democracy which led to his electoral victory. Yes, we do! Yes, we do! The election was a big story with mass participation from young and disillusioned people such as myself. Instead, the majority of media outlets chose to portray Corbyn as unelectable and a threat to the stability of our society. We looked at the first week of press coverage the first week after he was elected as leader um, of the major newspapers and we were pretty surprised by what we found which was that 60 percent of all the news stories were overtly critical of Jeremy Corbyn. I think that's quite incredible given that he had just been elected the story should have been around the movement that brought him to power what does this mean for British politics <laughs> but actually it was very very quick to set in the idea that Jeremy Corbyn was a problem I think they're doing it simply because they don't really know what to make of this new radical Labour leader why are there so many people but, underemployed or unemployed but, but, in Britain I, today? Sorry, I just want to push you. Are you saying that profits are too high? One way of dealing with that confusion is, it's a very simple one, which is that you mock, you jeer at, you make very crude assumptions about the leader instead of really trying to understand what is going on. The kind of tactics that have been used against Jeremy Corbyn have been used against other Labour leaders, against other left-wing figures, against other popular movements. Anyone who asks questions beyond those narrow sets of ideas, then that's when you find the media start to say, you know what, they're just too extreme. And it does us no good whatsoever. It means it shrinks public debate. It stops us finding out about important things going on in the world. Put on a proper suit, do up your tie, and sing the national anthem. This is about large organisations and not individual journalists. Just two companies, Rupert Murdoch's News Corp and Lord Rothmere's Daily Mail Group, control nearly 60% of all newspapers in national circulation today. So what is going on now is not in any sense new. Is uh, that the jumper that your mum made? What is interesting and new about uh, the Jeremy Corbyn phenomenon is that they are seen as a very serious threat to, to the extremely powerful interests. We now have a leader of the opposition who says quite openly he would never press the nuclear button. Does that worry you? Uh, well, it, it would worry me if that uh, thought was translated into power, as it were. There's no conspiracy about the coverage of Jeremy Corbyn. Most of the time, these are common sense assumptions that this thing is right, that immigration is a problem, that, aus that austerity is good. That filters down, and so journalists, broadcasters, people just start to think in those terms and, and it's not in their interest to ask a difficult question. By and large, we're talking about multi-billion pound operations. It's not surprising that they would share the same views and assumptions of other powerful stakeholders. Days are gone where a Labour leader sucks up to newspaper proprietors or tries to satisfy them with pleasing announcements. Can we expect the media to be fair, balanced and equal if the very society it reflects is so rife with inequality. We have to question, who is benefiting from this story? Once we see that, we can properly scrutinise and challenge the media messages we consume. Hello, we are Shelf. I'm Rachel, this is Ruby. Hello. And we're doing a video for Newspeaks about Yemen. Because we've heard that Britain is involved in a war in Yemen, and we were like, what? That doesn't sound like Britain. No, Britain stays out of the Middle East. Famously. So we asked our friends and family if they knew a bit more about the situation in Yemen.